What's up, guys? It's Dr. Murphy with coronatestct.com. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit. Well, tonight, it's now 8.17 at night on the 10th of March, 2021. I am here to tell you a little bit about ivermectin. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about ivermectin. We're going to talk about this medication used to treat strongoloides and head lice and scabies. Some medication is well tolerated, very safe. However, the FDA does not recommend it. And they definitely recommend you not take Fido's ivermectin. Stay tuned. We're going to review the data. It's Dr. Murphy, and you are watching Murphy's Medical Minute. All right, guys, so let me get set up here for you, and we will start the show. It's time to start the show. So I am going to comment briefly on ivermectin. Yes, there have been a lot of data on ivermectin. A lot of people are fighting. They, you know, We are worried about a repeat of the same issue that we saw with hydroxychloroquine. He's worried about a repeat with this issue. However, I'm here to tell you today, we need to know, is it safe or is it deadly? Recently, we've seen some data showing that convalescent plasma is a big loser for treating the novel coronavirus when you're infected. Convalescent plasma was all the rage in the very beginning, in the first three months of the disease. You know, I... I I had tested in Fairfield County, we tested in New Haven County, and Stanford Hospital was pushing a huge study with convalescent plasma. God knows how many people got convalescent plasma. So we gave it to them because we thought it might help. Well, we didn't have really evidence behind it and we pushed it forward and we gave it to a lot of people. Hopefully no one got really ill from it. Hopefully no one got really sick from it. But most importantly, we now know that the benefit is next to nil for convalescent plasma. So the question is, what's the data look like for ivermectin? What's the data look like for ivermectin? Here's what we know. Last week, the FDA says they do not approve ivermectin for COVID-19. They approve ivermectin for strongoloides. They approve, uh, approve ivermectin for river blindness. They approve ivermectin for scabies and head lice, but not for COVID-19. They believe that the data doesn't exist. And in fact, in the warning they issue, they tacitly admit they haven't reviewed the current literature on ivermectin. So that is deeply concerning. But most importantly, out of all of it, ivermectin can interact with other medications. And so here at Murphy's Medical Minute, as well as my team at Murphy Medical Associates, we believe that if you're going to use ivermectin, you have to review your other medications. To repeat, you have to review your other medications. Also, it's super important to know that COVID-19 um, treatment is new. We're learning new things every day. And the science is, science is always in evolution. So you got to stay tuned so that way we can bring the most up-to-date data to you. Now, let's review what's going on in a lot of places. Ivermectin is being used in a lot of places in South Africa, it's, um, in South America. It's being used in South Africa. Is it being used in Europe? Well, the European Medical Association stated last week also that ivermectin was not useful. So I don't know whether it's a hatchet job or whether all the media is getting together on this. We need to remember our cognitive biases. And when fear is around, guess what? When fear is around, we're going to believe that there's some conspiracy or some collusion to prevent a treatment. Well, guess what? The evidence is growing on ivermectin. Unfortunately, societies are not reviewing it. In fact, the EMA, like the FDA, has said they have not reviewed the current literature on ivermectin. You know who has? The Frontline Critical Care Coalition for COVID-19. They have reviewed it. They have reviewed it. And guess what they see? 
they see, put simply, that it works. So guess what? In countries like Slovakia, they've authorized ivermectin use. There is the British um, Ivermectin Recommendation Group. It's a group of scientists who reviewed the data on ivermectin. And guess what? They fully approve ivermectin use in the UK through this coalition. NHS does not approve it. So therefore, we've got a lot of controversy here. And what does Murphy say on Murphy's Medical Minute? We always have to evaluate the risks and the benefits. Now, given the fact that the South African variants are found all over Europe now, and the UK variant all over Europe now, ivermectin is being investigated even further, and we'll see more data come out of Europe soon. The NIH, the NIH reviewed the literature review that Dr. Corey and his team at the FLCCC have put together. Because of that, they've adjusted their policy. The NIH has now said there's not enough evidence for or against use of ivermectin, which means physician discretion needs to apply. Well, what's physician discretion? Well, physician discretion is, put simply, a risk-benefit analysis. A risk-benefit analysis. And what we know, what we've seen here, that's Dr. Uh, Khoury and Dr. Syed reviewing prescribing patterns for ivermectin in the U.S. And you can see here since November of last year, ivermectin prescriptions, boom, they're going up. They're going through the roof. Why? Because these protocols are being put out. The FLCCC has put out the iMask Plus protocol. So here we have media talking about poisoning case reports as if we're drinking bleach or putting UV light in our body. Um, you have the World Health Organization saying that the ivermectin is safe for community prophylaxis for parasites. However, they are only investigating it and have not recommended for or against, very similar to the NIH. The NIH, again, like I said, is giving it to physician discretion. The IDSA, the Infectious Disease Society of America, says that the risk does not outweigh the benefit. Okay, does not outweigh the benefit. Despite that, they do not recommend use for ivermectin in COVID-19. So what we have is two colliding opinions, two colliding opinions. So what do I do? I review the risk. So I've chewed through the risk data and of most import are the neurologic findings, the neurologic findings and adverse reactions in ivermectin use. And what have we found? Significant, significant neurologic side effects in about six in 100,000 people in one study six in 100,000 people. So that is a very small number of adverse drug reactions. And what we believe is part of that is likely some drug-drug interactions and some genetic predispositions and genetic, um, what we call polymorphisms, changes in our own genes that are responsible for drug metabolism, that are responsible for drug metabolism. These changes in our genes can easily be tested for. The problem is it takes a week to get the results back. So you really won't know. It's really not an ideal test to do before using ivermectin. So anywhere between 6 in 100,000 to 2 in 100,000 people have had adverse drug reactions to ivermectin. That's a very low number, guys. It's a very low number of people who have had adverse drug reactions. So that's the risk. The benefit. Well, in reviewing the data, not just that FLCCC put together, but also in my own lit review, we found six randomized control trials, six randomized control trials in critical illness. That is the gold standard, randomized control trials. In one randomized control trial, we found no benefit with um, convalescent plasma, and now we're kicking it to the curb. Now we're kicking it to the curb. There were no studies, no randomized controlled trials in convalescent plasma that showed any benefit. We have six randomized controlled trials in ivermectin for critical care, for critical illness that show benefit and reduction in mortality. For prophylaxis, we have three randomized controlled trials. They are small, but they are randomized controlled trials. In addition to that, we have evolving study and data for long COVID, but zero zero randomized controlled trials. 
So COVID-19 death from uh, ICUs has been dropping steadily in countries that are using ivermectin. Over here on the left, you can see right over there, you can see the Peruvian states deploying mass ivermectin and the deaths going down in their states. We see the Peruvian states having de uh, decreasing death using ivermectin. So we have some data for benefit. We have a minimal amount of risk, minimal amount of risk. It's important to know that the confounding factors here include steroid use, include steroid use. And what we know about critical illness with COVID is it's not so much an infection still, it's actually like an organizing pneumonia, a post-inflammatory syndrome that needs to be treated with high dose steroids, not just four or six milligrams of dexamethasone, but much higher doses. So in conclusion, in conclusion, physician prescribed ivermectin, in my humble opinion, is safe for acute illness. The few treatments available, the Math Plus protocol and the iMask protocol put forward by the frontline COVID-19 critical care coalition appear to be safe for patients. The data is evolving. The data is evolving. And because it's evolving, it's very important. I can't emphasize this enough. It is very, very, very important that we take a good look at the data. We need to let the data lead, but we can't cherry pick the data. I can't get over that enough. I can't emphasize it enough. We cannot cherry pick data. So often what happens is we cherry pick the data to, to our narrative. And when fear comes out, remember I said the cognitive bias comes out. One of the biggest cognitive biases is anchoring. Another one is confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is where we grab the pieces of data that sound true to us and that reinforce our opinions. Reinforcing our opinions is probably one of the biggest risks we have out there. We need to talk to lots of different people. Pierre Corey at FLCCC has talked to lots of different people, lots of different people, lots of different um, doctors, lots of different politicians, lots of different governmental entities. He's gaining traction. Ivermectin is gaining traction. The FDA had a couple of case reports of people using veterinary ivermectin. No, do not use veterinary ivermectin. It makes no sense. You should not do that. You shouldn't buy it off the street. You should find a doctor who's going to consider using medications like ivermectin and the iMask Plus protocol. At Murphy Medical Associates, our team at coronatestct.com, we use these medications. We use these on patients. We evaluate the risks and the benefits, and we review the medications that they're on to make sure that they do not have a confounding risk, to make sure that we don't have drug-drug interactions putting you at risk, putting you at risk. Uh, a little aside here I want to tell you guys. I just learned today that 50% of all genomic surveillance done in New York City on their samples is revealing either the UK variant or the New York City B1526 variant. Those variants now show, at least the, the UK variant shows, a significant increased risk in mortality with a confidence interval between a 30% increased risk or a 200% increased risk. Any way you slice it, it's an increased risk. Increased risk. That's the confidence interval between 30 and 200% more deadly. What are we doing opening up New York? What are we doing opening up Connecticut? And what are we doing opening up New Jersey? We're choosing wealth over health again. When what we really need to do is reinforce our vaccination strategy. We need to test, treat, isolate, and trace. We need to continue with these things. And I don't understand the politics at play here, but I think it is going to end up causing us to have another wave. We're not out of this yet. We have to continue to vaccinate. The vaccination data on the UK variant appears to be good. The Pfizer data, good. The J&J &J data, good. Not great, good. 
We'll have to continue to watch it. I think that these vaccines are great for prevention of death and hospitalization. They're great for that. Are they great for prevention of infection? They're good at that. Is the Pfizer vaccine going to be the end-all be-all to prevent South African variant or the Manaus Brazilian variant? I don't think so. I think the J&J has better data for that. We'll see over time as we continue to study these. But I can tell you right now, we are not out of the woods. We are not out of the woods. And if we're going to open up to Madison Square Gardens, to Yankees games, to 50% capacity in restaurants and bars, right in time for St. Patrick's Day, well, they're going to hold off till after St. Patrick's Day. But if they are going to open up in March, we are going to see a wave in April. And it's foolish to think we won't. So we're here on the front lines, ready for you. Our family, our friends, and our patients at Murphy Medical Associates. So I want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight for the special edition on Ivermectin, Will It Kill Me or Not? The short answer is the following. Use Ivermectin in conjunction with a doctor who will prescribe it. If you can't find a doctor who will prescribe it, go to coronatestct.com and come see us. Or look at the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Coalition to see their protocols, bring them to your doctor and ask him to consider or her to consider using these medications. The risk is low. The benefit data is accumulating. So I, I think ivermectin is probably going to be a reasonable treatment strategy. It's just a matter of having the data catch up to it. I love you guys. I hope you have a great night. It's Dr. Murphy, Murphy Medical Associates, and our team at coronatestct.com. You just watched Murphy's Medical Minute. Get some exercise out there. Get your sun. Eat right. Skip the carbohydrates. Improve the ketones. That's the way for successful weight loss and healthy body type to fight things like the novel coronavirus. 78% of all of those that died from this virus, overweight and obese. We have a solution. Ketogenic diets, intermittent fasting, cut the processed crap. Remember, your body is made to be well. Put it in the right environment to do it. Love you guys. Have a great night. It's Dr. Murphy. You just watched Murphy's Medical Minute. Yeah.